This video is about cyclophosphamide and other alkylating agents which are used in the treatment of cancer. The various alkylating agents which are going to be discussed in this video are nitrogen musters which include cyclophosphamide and other drugs, thiotipa, busulfan, nitrosoureas like carmustine, dacarbazine, procarbazine and much more. What's going on guys, you're watching Midwich Made Simple. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon nearby so that you'll not miss any of my videos. So alkylating agents. Before starting this video, I'd like to tell you an overview about the mechanism of action of all the alkylating agents. Okay, so the basic uh, idea is that the alkylating agents uh, like uh, cyclophosphamide initially forms carbonium ion intermediates in the body. And when they form carbonium ion intermediates, uh, they will have the capacity to transfer various alkyl groups to various cellular macromolecules in the body. So this process is called as alkylation. Uh, alkylation mainly occurs on position 7 of guanine residues in DNA. Uh, this is a fairly important point to remember. Although uh, this point is specifically mentioned that uh, position 7 of guanine residues in DNA is specifically involved, uh, other positions in DNA can also be involved. All these lead to cross-linking of DNA and various other mechanisms, finally leading to blocking of DNA synthesis. Now this is the mechanism of action of alkylating agents in a nutshell. This mechanism of action applies to almost all the alkylating agents which are going to be discussed in this video. So first let's start our discussion by looking at cyclophosphamide. Uh, so remember that the mechanism of action is almost similar for all the drugs which are going to be discussed in this video and uh, we're going to be talking about the special points on all the uh, alkylating agents. Now let's begin. Cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide is inactive or as such. When it enters the body, it, uh, it is transformed into its active metabolites like uh, aldophosphamide and phosphoramide mustard uh, in the liver especially. And one more important point to remember is that cyclophosphamide also has immunosuppressant property in addition to being an effective anti-cancer drug. So this is a very important point to remember because many of the examiners may ask you uh, to tell an anti-cancer drug which also has immunosuppressant property and without thinking you can say cyclophosphamide as the answer for that question. Alright, it's very important to remember this point. Cyclophosphamide is used for fairly a large number of cancers uh, like lymphoma, multiple myeloma, leukemia, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, small cell lung cancer, neuroblastoma and many other cancers. The adverse effects uh, can range from uh, chemotherapy induced nausea, vomiting uh, and the very important adverse effects in case of cyclophosphamide is alopecia which is loss of hair and cystitis which is inflammation of the urinary bladder. Iphosphamide is a congener of cyclophosphamide and it has longer and dose dependent half-life. So compared to cyclophosphamide, iphosphamide has comparatively longer half-life. Iphosphamide also has fairly large number of uses, can be used in bronchogenic cancer, breast cancer, testicular cancer, bladder cancer, and various head and neck carcinomas, osteogenic sarcomas, and lymphomas. The, uh, one of the very important adverse effects of ephosphamide is hemorrhagic cystitis. Now, this is a very important adverse effect uh, to remember uh, because this is going to be asked in your exams and uh, while treating the patients, you must be aware that this is a very important complication of phosphamide and this complication can be treated with a drug which is known as mesna. Mesna is actually a drug which, which has a SH compound which is actually called as thiol and uh, that is excreted in the urine. Okay. So when you give mesna to a patient who is uh, known to have hemorrhag hemorrhagic cystitis following iphosphamide intake, what happens is that the mesna will be excreted in urine and it binds and inactivates to the toxic metabolites of iphosphamide. Okay, 
and by inactivating the tox toxic metabolites of ephosphamide, it decreases the chances of hemorrhagic cystitis and that's how uh, Mesna works in treating hemorrhagic cystitis. Hope that makes sense. Now, meclorithamine. Meclorithamine is also called as mustin hydrochloride. Now, it is mainly used in Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, but these days, bet better drugs are available uh, as better replacement, uh, better choices instead of me meclorithamine. Meclorithamine has been a component of MOP regimen. Uh, this is actually an acronym. Uh, MOP regimen drugs are used in the treatment of uh, Hodgkin lymphoma. All right. So in MOP regimen, M stands for meclorithamine. But these days, uh, some other drugs, some other better drugs have replaced meclorithamine in many conditions. So the common side effects of meclorithamine are blistering, nausea, vomiting and various other hemodynamic changes. Now blistering is very common, that's why um, this drug has been mentioned as a vesicant, okay? Uh, so vesicant basically vesicant basically means the ability of a drug uh, to cause blistering. All right. So remember that meclorithamine can be given only intravenously. Now about chlorambucil. Chlorambucil is a very slow acting drug, and one of the very important point for exam point of view is that it is highly selective on lymphoid tissue. We're going to be talking about one more drug uh, in a couple of minutes. Which, is, which will be highly selective on myeloid tissue. So it's very important to uh, remember which is active against lymphoid tissue and which is active against uh, myeloid tissue because that's a very important question. All right, so uh, let's try to remember this. Uh, since chlorambucil is highly selective on lymphoid tissue, uh, it will have very little effect on myeloid tissue, all right? So since they are highly selective on lymphoid tissue, they are used mainly in treatment of uh, malignancies associated, associated with lymphoid tissue like chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is abbreviated as CLL, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. One of the very important, very uh, simple way to remember uh, that chlorambucil mainly acts on lymphoid tissue is that you can remember the first letter of chlorambucil, which is C, and the first letter in lymphoid tissue, which is L. All right, so C and L, uh, which is used in the treatment of CLL which is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Um, I hope uh, you, you understood that. Uh, that's all right, but uh, if you uh, go through this uh, two, three times, uh, it'll be very easy for you. If you're liking this video, uh, please make sure to hit the like button right now. Now about melphalan. Melphalan is another drug which, has, which can be used in multiple myeloma, ovarian car uh, carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Uh, this is also an alkylating, alkylating agent uh, which has got uh, similar mechanism of action like any other alkylating agent. The adverse effects of melphalan are bone marrow depression, uh, infections, uh, diarrhea and can, uh, in some cases it can lead to pancreatitis. Now thiotipa, it is a very toxic drug. Uh, so it is rarely used in ovarian cancer and bladder cancer treatment these days. Uh, Busulfan. Now this is the drug I've been talking about previously. This is a drug which is highly selective for myeloid elements. Okay, so it mostly spares the lymphocyte, uh, lymphoid, lymphoid tissues, and in the myeloid elements, they are more selective for granulocyte precursors compared to platelets and RBCs. However, all these elements are affected equally, almost equally. So, the adverse effects of busulfan are hyperuricemia, pulmonary fibrosis, and skin pigmentation. Now, one of one of, uh, one of the question which is uh, not so commonly asked, although it's very important to know, is that uh, they they'll be asking uh, name some drugs which can name some cancer chemotherapeutic drugs which can cause skin pigmentation. In that case, you can say busulfan. Now, look at this point. It is highly selective for myeloid elements. So, this should be used in some conditions uh, where there is uh, involvement of myeloid tissue, right? So, that's why uh, this is very effective in the treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia. 
which is abbreviated as CML. Hope that makes sense. Now about nitrosoureas. This includes carmustine and lomustine. These are highly lipid soluble, so whatever is highly lipid soluble, it can easily penetrate the blood brain barrier. So this is effective in meningeal leukemia and in various brain cancers. The adverse effects of nitrosoureas are nausea, vomiting, bone marrow depression, visceral fibrosis in which any organ can undergo fibrosis, uh, this can be lungs and there can also be some kidney damage due to nitrosoureas. Now dacarbazine. Dacarbazine can be used in the treatment of malignant melanoma and heart skin disease. Adverse effects of dacarbazine are nausea, vomiting, flu-like symptoms, neuropathy and myelosuppression. Temozolamide. Temozolamide is very effective in treatment of glioma and in malignant brain tumors and uh, malignant uh, melanoma. And the last drug for today's discussion is procarbazine. Uh, it acts, uh, although it's been discussed under alkylating agents, uh, it's got um, a somewhat different mechanism of action. It methylates and depolymerizes DNA, and by doing so, it's known to cause some, some amount of chromosomal damage, and it also inhibits nucleic acid synthesis. Since it causes chromosomal damage, uh, some amount of mutagenic or carcinogenic potential is present for procarbazine and that's important to remember. So since they have carcinogenic potential, that itself predisposes the person to some other cancers despite treating the current cancer. Procarbazine also forms a component of MOP regimen which is used in the treatment of Hodgkin lymphoma. Adverse effects of procarbazine. Since it is a weak MAO inhibitor, uh, it can cause uh, various side effects like sedation and various other central nervous system side effects. When a person who is taking procarbazine also consumes alcohol, there is uh, severe interactions leading to flushing and severe disulfiram-like reactions. It can also cause various other symptoms like vomiting, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. Check out my video on methotrexate pharmacology. Uh, the link will be provided in the end of this video. You can support my channel by donating me on www.patreon.com slash medbits made simple and, and you can check out my blog on www.medbitsmadesimple.blogspot.com The reference for this video is from this textbook. The link of this textbook will be provided in the description of this video. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and tell me your doubts and suggestions in the comment section below and share this video to all your friends and tell them to subscribe to my channel because we are very near to reaching 2000 subscribers. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video.